wonder why you would even want a different cajon. So, some new dogs in the medium-sized doghouse. Some people have asked me, oh, why don't we see your face? Well, it's not about me. It's about the cajon. This is number 67. Uh, a couple of things I've been working on. This is a very short cajon. Uh, my concept is to try to get the biggest noise out of the smallest box, the most noises, pitches, tones, out of the smallest box that I can. Um, I build these, if you think about people at the drum sets, they tell you, you should sit lower and comfortable with your legs parallel to the floor or nearly parallel to the floor. Okay, this cajon is too short for me, but I have some shorter friends. Well, it's more a matter of the leg length. They have shorter legs, so they want a cajon that's closer to the floor. Um, now, one thing that does, if you're going to be sitting on your cajon for a long time, um, it's easier to reach lower without bending over as much so you can access all those noises. Also, when you're sitting there on your cajon, if you've got your arms hanging by your side, your hands and arms are naturally closer to the floor, lower down. So it just makes sense to me that the side of your cajon ought to be making some noises. So that's one of the reasons why. A shorter cajon makes you more stable. No need to lean it back. A lot of people lean back because it helps them get down a little bit lower, but you don't need to. And one thing that does is it kind of occupies your feet so that you can't use your feet to either be stable and use your pedals. So I got stuff like this and I tap my foot. It's easier to tap your foot and move around. So this one, if you're interested in this one, uh, this one is about 12 and a half inches tall, or that's about 32 centimeters if you measure things that way. There's three quarter inch height, heavy duty feet. I have not seen any feet more heavy duty than these on anybody's cajon anywhere. This is another one that's similar. You notice uh, the main construction of these is Baltic birch. That's a hardwood plywood where every ply is birch. It has a really nice musical tone. Now this, these two cajones, the playing surfaces are an eighth inch thick piece of oak where there's one veneer of oak and two layers of mahogany. Now one thing that does, I, I make cajones that have uh, Baltic birch slapping and touching faces too. Uh, the birch is brighter and punchier. I prefer the oak. The oak has a warmer, mellower kind of tone. But then again, that's why I make the variety. And also you can tell there's a snare in these because a lot of people like that snare sound. Uh, and I'll go through some of the things. Please take note. You can use your conga, djembe, dumbek, pandero, tabla. Uh, all kinds of hand drum, frame drum technique that really speaks well because these cajones respond with a sensitivity that uh, the most cajones just don't have built into them. And uh, this is built like a piece of fine furniture, fine cabinetry. Uh, so it's going to last a lot longer than those basic boxes that just give you the thump and slap. Even though some of those are pretty nice and they're, they're made out of some beautiful wood, but if, if it doesn't give you a sound, what, what good is it? Um, anyway, I'll go through some of the things. Watch, watch some of the techniques because once you get one of these, there is definitely a learning curve because you'll be able to open up and use all these different techniques and uh, make a whole new batch of sounds that you've never made before. Since every piece of wood is different, you've got a different batch of pitches from one side. These are both 
Each side is a full service playing surface that has its own batch of tones and pitches. There's a pocket here that divides the head in a non-symmetrical way. And that makes the areas of this head more and less floppy, and that enables a lot of these different pitches to come simultaneously, depending on where you hit, touch, tap. I like to tell people that you can touch a drum, you don't hit a drum. If you've got this on your left side, see how your arm is angled? So that's kind of a good position to reach those. If you use those at your right side, I do this a lot. My thumb is here, my hand's there. I do that motion. They're both convenient, depending on how you want to approach it. Uh, another thing, with a lot of sound, that you know, it's, it's like if you have an instrument, you can take sound away, but it's hard to add it back. And one thing that's inherent, since this is a wooden box, there's harmonics and overtones that accompany the sounds that you hear. I had a sound guy uh, say that those those pitches and tones really bothered him and kept him from being able to get the sound that he wanted to get. They interfered with the sound he wanted to get. So I was like, okay, well, well what can I do? So I, I thought, well, could I build in dampening in the cajones? And I'm like, no, I don't want to do that because not everybody wants to have a dampened sound cajon. So I got my soft cotton handkerchief and just put it in there. That kills a lot of those overtones and and high harmonics, but you still hear the pure fundamental tone. And uh, I, I got like got a Nerf ball because it's a soft foam and cut it up. And you can adjust the amount of that overtone ring that you want to hear. This one is number 68. It's the same size. 12 and a half inches, 32 centimeters, the three quarter inch heavy duty feet, bring it up to about 34 centimeters. So if you like this cajon, you can possibly have this one or one a lot like it. Thank you.